months ago, uh, we had the chief executive of Olasan, and he was telling us about the search for an Irish candidate to join the team which will fly the first manned space vehicle of the European Space Agency. Well, he's back to tell us about the winners, or maybe I should say the survivors of a very rigorous selection process. So welcome back, Jim McBride. Uh, Jim, first of all, how many people responded to your plea? Well, the first response, Pat, was you know, after the ad, and we had 700 inquiries. Okay, people who thought maybe this could yeah, be for me. Yeah, so how many of them out. actually filled in forms then? Just over half, 352. Okay. Uh, the first uh, part of the selection process then was uh, vetting the application forms, and that took it down to 250. Okay, so most of them were reasonably serious in terms of qualification oh, and yeah. experience. Indeed, they were. Yes, okay. yeah, they were. You know, they were first-class applications, uh, and it was it was as you know, you called it the mother of all forms last time we yeah. talked about it. Uh, they had to give a lot of details about themselves. Uh, so, uh, an examination of the forms took it down to 250. Then the next stage of the process. Uh, which was uh, an aptitude test and a preliminary medical test. That took it down to 46. Ooh, so 200 went by the wayside because of little exactly, exactly. health yeah. problems or yeah. fitness problems yeah. or things yeah. like that. And then the final stage was getting it down. Uh, we got it down then, uh, we got it down then to 10 and finally to 4. The 4. The 4. And we have the 4 with us tonight. Uh, will you welcome them please? We have um, in the order in which they will come down the steps, Dr. Kieran Bulger, who is a, a, a senior house surgeon at Mobile Hospital. Dr. Deirdre McMahon. Dr. Deirdre McMahon. Yes, join us here, Deirdre. And then two captains. Captain William Butler with our lingus and Captain Kevin Barry. Okay, how do you feel to be so special out of 700 people who wrote off, uh, you're down to the last four? Marvellous, great, great, uh, great feeling. Um, very pleased to have been one of the few chosen and it's, uh, it's a great privilege. I'm looking forward to representing our country, I think. Is the yeah, but well, we've two docks and two flyers. Uh, Deirdre, is there any difference in where you might end up in a space programme because you're medical people and the other guys are flyers? There is um, the European Space Agency, they're looking for about four flyers and about six what they call mission specialists. We, um, the two doctors and the two pilots would fall into different categories, so we're not actually competing against each other. You're not actually competing? The, the two here are not competing against the two there? Right? Not, not at this stage. Not so far. Not so far. <laughs> uh, William, what, what <coughs> prompted you to apply for this? I was always fascinated with space ever since the Apollo moonshots and followed it ever since, and it's a dream to have an opportunity to go for it. It really is the ultimate. Yeah, you really wanted to be an astronaut or a cosmonaut. Well, I suppose I'd love to be one. We never really thought it was possible. And uh, it's only when this came about that uh, there's actually a possibility of going for it, you know? Yeah. What, what about you, Kevin? Is it every Air Corps man's dream to get up a little bit higher than you're able to at the moment? I doubt that, no. But uh, myself, I've always wanted it, you know. But in Ireland, it was it just never seemed possible, you know, because it, it just was just wasn't there. So the next thing for me was to join the Air Corps, really, you know. Okay. You're a married man. What did herself think when you suggested this might be on the horizon? Uh, first of all, she thought I was a lunatic. Yeah. Then she said, well, you've done other things before, why not this? So uh, I think she's fully behind me now, you know. Yeah. What about the rest of you? William? Uh, well, my wife always knew it was my dream, and uh, when the chance came, she supported me. Just go for it, Did she know? think that, that, you know, when you said, I'd love to be an astronaut, you know, it's... I don't think she thought it would end up here, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, Deirdre, you, you are married too. You've got uh, four children. That's correct. Your responsibility. Uh, age from what to what? I have two older stepchildren. Um, yeah. They're 17 and 15, and uh, two small fellows. They're four and two. Okay, reaction from them, first of all. Well, I suppose the... the, the teenage step stepchildren are at the age where they could be mildly embarrassed in front of all their school friends, but they're really all very pleased, and the two young ones, they haven't a clue. They don't know what's going on at all. No idea at all. Yeah. It's just but the, the older, they'd be slightly embarrassed. What's mother up to? Oh, uh, that's the, that kind of thing. Her mother's face is in the media. What what is she up to? Um, <laughs> don't be letting down the family name. What what made you want to do this? 
like 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 all of us, um, I think I was inspired by the Apollo moonshots back in the sixties. Grew up wanting to be an astronaut when the other children wanted to be footballers or um, anything anything you know kind of more reasonable than uh, an astronaut. But the fascination with space has stayed with me all my life, and uh, I'm really glad to be getting this chance. And when you saw the ad in the papers, did you? leap at it and say yes this is my moment oh. and if I don't do it um, I'll only have myself to blame. It, it was physically leaping whenever I saw it I was delighted I was very surprised first of all I didn't think that there would be any chance for an Irish person to get into space but um, it, it just was an opportunity that just couldn't be could, couldn't be passed out. Yeah how about you Karen? Um, I thought it was an April Fool's joke because the, <laughs> the closing date was actually for in April and then when I realized it was true well the first thing I had to do was tell my wife and I got the same reaction that Kevin got I think only my wife knows I'm a lunatic, she doesn't just think it. <laughs> but um, she settled down then, I settled down, started to think about it serious. And really then, when we got into the last 46 stage, that's when really began to believe, well, maybe this is possible. And, and she indulged you so far, but as you got that close, was there a change close, in attitude? Um, no, I think it got more serious about, well, what does it mean, you know, will we have to move and that, which isn't really a problem with me because uh, because my career anyway in medicine, we're, we were going to emigrate anyway. so. It's, it's yeah. not really a problem from that point of view, you know. Okay. Now, you've been through a whole pile of tests. Um, what, was, what was the worst moment for you, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the second stage of the motion uh, sickness test was the worst for me. What was involved there? Um, they put you on this chair, and you rotate approximately uh, 180 degrees per second, and you have to move your head up and down uh, to these beeps. Now, the first set was uh, about eight you know, 30 second rotations. And then the second set, which I did was uh, two minutes at 150, uh, sorry, 150 degrees. And then three, two three minute sessions at 180 degrees. Right, what time of the day did you do this at? Just after breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> was, there a, was there a parting between you and your uh, cornflakes? Well, Eggs. the second, third, se <laughs> third session there was, yeah. <laughs> Followed by an immediate uh, recovery period and back in again. So back in again, and but you came through that with um, fly, flying colours. If that's not too <laughs> graphic a description, it's all well, yellow. yellow. Yeah, yeah. There's no carrots anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> William, what, what about you? Was that uh, the worst moment for you? The same, same as Kevin. I think when they start to slide over the bucket, you know, that's, that's <laughs> when the truth, the moment of truth is there. The moment of truth. Yeah. And yet you guys have been through that sort of thing in your training, uh, yeah. particularly mm. you, Kevin, I suppose. That surprised me. I, I didn't realise. I actually went in feeling great, you know. And then I, I can handle this. Yeah, stuff. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> De Deirdre, what, what about you? I hear that you managed to hang on to the prunes or whatever you had. Well, it's, it's, you don't want to boast, but <laughs> <laughs> being the mere woman, I managed to hold on to the muesli. That was obviously the, the secret I didn't disclose to my other fellow candidates, so I did the whole run. But uh, there was no credit in it, and they'd have to pay me money to get me to do it again. To do it again. W was that the worst thing for you? It was, it was. Also, the anxiety waiting for the final selection to be announced. Um, the, that was that was very worrying. Now you had uh, very rigorous medical testing, and That's right. you, being a doctor, would know about that. Uh, were you surprised at anything they did? Uh, well, yes, <laughs> to be, not, not to be uh, too polite, but um, certainly they were examining parts of the body that I didn't think were entirely um, essential for space flight. But uh, they were all looked into carefully, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know I think we all passed those um, probes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Space probe. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> um.